It was back in July, I think it was the early 2000s. It felt like someone had came up behind me and put a pillow over my head and I couldn't breathe. And I realized something is not right here. The next day I was diagnosed with chronic congestive heart failure. Heart failure is a very common ailment across the United States. It affects about 7 million people. That being said, there are lots of different forms of heart failure. There's people that you hear have heart failure and are out running marathons. And then you have people that have heart failure that are hooked up to machines to keep them alive. All those years between the early 2000s and up to 2023, with congestive heart failure, I had never been hospitalized. And then it just came, wham, like September 18th, 2023. For Regina, she had what we call advanced ambulatory heart failure, meaning that her heart had gotten so sick that it was in the end stages, yet she was able to walk around and carry out her daily activities, but with a lot of limitations. We thought the best way forward wasn't medications, but consideration of a left ventricular assist device, which is a pump that sits inside of the left ventricle, the main pumping chamber of the heart, and essentially continuously circulates blood to the rest of the body, reducing the amount of work that your native heart has to do. I came to Johns Hopkins on November the 1st. They had called me and said that Dr. Killich was willing to consult meet with me if I wanted to make the trip to Baltimore. He had done bloodless surgeries before on, you know, with Jehovah's Witnesses. Or so I had my answer right then and there with him. So yes, he's, he's, um, he's one of my angels. Bloodless surgery is surgery where you can't use certain blood products because of someone's religious preference. Bloodless surgery in itself is like working without a safety net. And the higher the stakes, the tougher that is. Heart surgery, as you can imagine, is one of those where it's really high stakes. But one of the great things about working at Hopkins is our ability to collaborate and work together in solving complex issues. And over the last six years or so, we've done over 50 to 60 patients who've required bloodless operations, and we've been able to do all of them successfully. They did the procedure on December the 19th. When I woke up, it was on December the 20th, the next day. And I kept saying, well, where's the pain at? When am I gonna start feeling the pain? But I didn't. So all I had was Tylenol for about two days. After the implantation of this device, we had to be really careful with the amount of blood that we drew from Ms. Collins and ensure that we're able to get her blood thin enough for this device to work. And through the collaboration of all of our nurses and perfusionists and caretakers, we're able to get her home safely. And this is my lifeline, Elvad. I named it Vad, and they said, oh, male, yeah, Vad is his name. That green light means I'm alive. <laughs> When the green light's not on, I'm in trouble. Going forward, her care consists of coming to our ventricular assist device clinic initially once a week to make sure that her blood levels are okay and that the pump is working perfectly. And as she gets further and further out, this becomes less frequent. The hope for Ms. Collins is that not only does she go back to her regular life, but starts doing even more now that she has better blood flow to the rest of her body. You got to find your whatever your niche is in life that brings you calmness. I love nature and outdoors, watching the bunnies and the foxes and everything else as you're going. I don't walk as fast as I did before, but it's accepting what you cannot change, accepting your limitation, but knowing that it doesn't stop you. You just work around it and keep on going. Enjoy your life every day that you have. You got someone you love or whatever it is, Live from the heart with family. Appreciate those that you love. That's how I see it now.